I'm Pat Welsh from Pollock Media Group. I've been a radio programmer and consultant for stations from every format and genre around the world, both in terms of traditional FM radio and Internet radio as well. On behalf of Live 365, I'm presenting the first in a series of tutorials on radio programming. The first one, Principles of Programming Music Radio, deals with music selection and playlist creation. The purpose of the tutorials is to maximize your audience, to help you satisfy existing listeners as well as attract new ones. And they're intended for Live 365 programmers from all stations and genres. We're going to include strategies and tactics to help you build your audience. And subsequent tutorials will provide advice on other topics such as interstitial elements, on-air delivery, and more. The first tutorial, Principles of Programming Music Radio, comes in four parts, and they're designed to be viewed in order because each of the four parts builds on the previous ones. Here are the topics we'll be covering over the course of the four parts. Part one is basic principles, concepts in building a music library, that is, creating the universe of music that you're going to be choosing from. Part two has some specific examples of how to do this, examples of categorizing music and creating clocks. Part three will have the most important rules for scheduling music. And part four, thoughts on what to consider when adding or dropping songs, when making changes to your music library. Here are some of the most frequently asked questions about music programming. We're going to attempt to answer all of them. The common goal is to increase your audience satisfaction. So many of the principles and strategies will apply across all genres and stations. Now the tactics will be different. Top 40 stations are trying to achieve something different than a classical music station. But the same strategies can work in both cases. This also applies to strategies for FM radio versus Internet radio. The strategies are going to be very much the same. FM radio picks a target audience and goes in search of what to play to satisfy that audience, whereas in many cases an Internet radio station may start with a musical point of view and then try to attract the audience. But in terms of trying to build that audience, the underlying principles of attracting that audience are the same. It all starts with the audience and focusing on the listeners' needs and tastes. What do they like the best? What do they expect from your radio station? You have to select the styles and songs that will appeal to those people. Now, some of those songs are going to be well-known and expected, and others are going to be new, giving the listener a sense of discovery and adventure. That'll vary from genre to genre. For example, a top 40 station, the listener expects a lot of new music. On the other hand, the listener of an adult contemporary station or a soft hit station, in that case, a little new music goes a long way. Besides audience, the other word you're going to see a lot is balance. And balance is very important. Balancing all of the attributes that make up your station's musical universe. A balance of styles, a balance of eras, tempos and textures. And the final point here may seem to be a bit of a contradiction. How to achieve consistency without predictability. We'll talk more about that in the near future. Creating a music library isn't enough. All songs aren't created equal. And it's not just what you play, but how you put it all together. It starts with which songs are the most important for your audience. Now I'm going to use the words important and popular interchangeably because after all, the most popular music in almost all cases is the most important. But what's popular for a hip-hop audience and what's popular for a classic rock fan are two completely different things. But the concept is the same. Find the most popular music. You start by defining the essential music for your audience. Then you add other songs that you think fit the definition of your radio station. These decisions will form the basis for organizing and categorizing your music library. Now, optimizing the library means getting the most out of it, playing the most important songs the most. And then the other two points, avoiding repetition and achieving variety, they go together and they're complementary, but they're not quite the same thing. I'm going to explain more about how they differ in just a couple of minutes. Fast rotations is a controversial yet essential element towards building a big audience. The fact is that playing big hits with lots of frequency is the number one way of attracting a large audience. After all, no one complains about hearing their favorite song too much. Instead, they complain about songs they never liked in the first place or songs they've grown tired of. And time spent listening is short. We hear our own radio stations much more than the listeners do. 
After all, you know every song available on your station. It's much more predictable to you than it is to the audience. The third point here I want to stress, repetition is usually a function of poor music rotations, not playing songs too much. It's a mechanical issue, typically, of not rotating your music properly. That causes songs to come up in very predictable patterns. That's when you get complaints about repetition. Music programming is both an art and a science. It's the art of surprising the listener by offering something unexpected, and it's the science of satisfying the listener by playing the most important songs the most often. Optimizing your music rotation starts with identifying the essential songs for your audience, and yes, that means the most popular songs. The biggest mistake I see is programmers who try to avoid playing the most popular music. They think that, after all, FM radio is playing nothing but big hits, and so many Internet programmers think, well, perhaps I should avoid playing those songs altogether. I think that's a big mistake. I believe that the secret to good programming is you include the essential music, the big hits for your audience, but also add plenty of other music, things that you would not hear on an FM radio station. That creates the variety and the difference that will satisfy all of your listeners. Maximum audience appeal starts with the hit, but make sure that you have the oh wow factor mixed in as well. Now after building the music library, your total universe of music you're going to draw from, you need to categorize the music to create the best rotation so you can play the most important music the most. You also need to build rotation clocks or, or sequences to provide variety and balance. You start with something perhaps that's a big hit, then you play a brand new song, then perhaps a hit from two years ago, then another new song. That sequence is what we mean by the clock. Now to do all of this effectively, you need music scheduling software. There are many music scheduling software programs available. Traditional FM radio uses programs like Selector, Music Master, and Music One. Music One is a system designed by a longtime radio programmer, and the company has an agreement with Live 365 to provide Music One to Live 365 station programmers for a very good price. The system interfaces directly with Live 365's back end, and it's easy to learn and easy to use. So I definitely recommend taking a look at Music One. But whatever your decision, you really need effective tools to allow you to get maximum star power, balance, and variety in your daily playlists. And with that, we'll conclude Part 1 of Principles of Programming Music Radio. In Part 2, I'll get into categorizing music and creating rotation clocks, and I'll give you a basic model of a music library with the structure and the clocks.